Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And there is much mystery surrounding the finances of the SNP. And no, not that kind of mystery, not Operation Branch Form. Just simply, how are they paying for this election? Since Hamza Yousaf left, they've had literally no donations. Nothing has been registered. And even in the year when he was in charge, they only had one major donation that was registered. They've had a few bequests, but nothing much. And it's been revealed that the biggest single input to the finances of the SNP is the short money, <clears throat> which amounts to about £1.1 million over the last year. But of course, out of that, they've got salaries to pay. They've got buildings to rent. They've got cars to run, etc. There's a lot of expense. And we know for a fact that besides the short money and the fact that there's no corporate sponsorship, there's no bequests anymore, certainly not this year, and that they are now reliant entirely on short money and uh, members' money, although they're very, very shady about how many members there are, uh, and they refuse to let that number come out. So we know it's definitely lower than the, they're indicating, that they are absolutely brassic lint. They haven't got enough money. Now, as well, they've admitted that all the uh, all the people in the party, all the um, potential, you know, uh, candidates have to raise their own deposit money. And they're doing that through social uh, funding means, GoFundMes and things like that. This is a party so close to bankruptcy that you have to wonder who would trust them with the economy of a nation when they cannot even afford to run their own party. Their own funds are so badly administered, and yet they're saying, oh, no, you can trust us with the economy of Scotland. I don't think so. I don't think so whatsoever. But where are they getting their money? I think that actually will need to be investigated. It is very, very doubtful that even that million pound short money is enough to run the party, given its overheads. Money must be coming in from elsewhere. Now, we know at the last published um, uh, accounts, they were 800,000 in debt. There's another year yet. They haven't published this year's, which are now due, incidentally. It took them long enough to find the last set of uh, accountants to do the, uh, the numbers. Those accounts haven't been published. They need to be published. And then the new set have to come out. I'm going to make a prediction. They're probably two million in debt, two million in the hole. And the banks won't lend them any more money because the banks want repaying. They have uh, an obligation to shareholders. And since they're about to lose a lot of seats, the banks will say, yeah, there's no way you're going to repay that with, with fewer um, MPs. So the banks not only will not lend them any more money, but may even foreclose on the loan and say, look, we need our money back. And that put them into administration. And I think that may well happen straight after the election because the banks have a legal obligation to their shareholders. It's going to be tight, isn't it? And it, of course, once they also they release their next set of accounts, you'll be able to see from the income statement how much money's come in from the members. And since we know members only pay £2 a month, a little bit of jiggly pokery, a little bit of mathematics there should be able to work out how many members they have. They won't like this. That's why they're delaying everything. They know that they're finished. And we know they're finished. Everybody knows they're finished. There's a few foaming at the mouth, wild-eyed loons who still vote for them. But eventually, they'll have to accept they're finished because they won't be appearing on any more ballot papers. It's going to be cracking. Anyway, thanks a lot. Bye.